Good morning and welcome to worship. This is the United Methodist Church of the Dunes. I'm Pastor Lou Grettenberger and today is the third Sunday of Advent. We celebrate today the theme of joy. I wonder if you might join me in listening now for our announcements from Carla, our communications director. During these four weeks in Advent, Church of the Dunes is gathering its annual Advent offering. This year's offering will be given to four local organizations that provide food for those in need. And this year the needs are especially great. Information about this was provided in a recent letter from the Missions and Social Concerns Commission. And there's also information in today's bulletin. Each Sunday evening during Advent, Church of the Dunes has a drive-in style outdoor Advent wreath lighting with carols and scriptures. This can be seen from inside a vehicle and heard on the car radio. And then on Christmas Eve, Church of the Dunes will have an online Christmas Eve worship service at 5 p.m. Then at 8 p.m. there will be a drive-in style candle lighting with carols. This too can be experienced from inside a vehicle and heard on the car radio. Thanks so much for being here today. Let's join Pastor Lou. We join me in our call to worship. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Our joy is in the Lord who blesses us. Shout for joy, for the Lord is near. Our praises ascend to God for the mighty things God has done. Let your praise dance and swirl in tribute to God. Surely God blesses and saves us. Alleluia. Praise be to God. Amen. Will you join me now in our opening hymn, Good Christian Friends Rejoice. Once again, we come to the Advent wreath to light. Today, we light the pink candle, the celebration candle, the candle of joy, which reminds us even as we examine our hearts, even as we go through difficult times or as we prepare or patiently wait for Christ's coming, we can have joy in Christ Jesus even now. We place our candle. Fear not, behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy that will be for all people. Luke chapter 2, verse 10. I hope now that you will take the opportunity to light your candle at home as well. We want everything to look nice. The decorations of the season, our homes with their lights and tinsel, wreaths and ribbons. We want to lighten the darkness around us, 
bring beauty to the ugliness that wears us down. We decorate because it is tradition, because it lifts our hearts, because it makes us feel like children again. We deck our halls because company is coming. The prophet Isaiah smiled when he said, God will give a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a mantle of praise instead of faint spirit, a faint spirit. No matter how far we feel from the spirit of the season, God promises to decorate us with love and with joy. We light these candles as a sign of our joy in the beautiful things of this season, not just the things that glitter and flash, but the deeper things, the beauty of the heart and the soul, the beauty of love shared in service and hospitality. We light this candle of joy because company is coming. O, o come, o come, o come Emmanuel. Emmanuel. for our children's time if you get your boys and girls to come and join me for a few moments that would be great hello boys and girls it's so good to see you again i wanted to review with you how far we've come on our advent journey you remember advent the season that leads up to the coming of jesus into christmas our first week we were reminded of hope that we need to believe in what might be, even when things aren't going that great. Last week, we talked about peace, a reminder that we needed to be in right relationship with those around us. And today, we are reminded of joy. Happiness is one thing. Joy is something else. Joy is something that we have even on bad days because it's planted in our hearts. The scriptures say it's something like a, a fountain. You've seen fountains where out of a little source, all this water comes and spreads out. Well, joy doesn't come from what happens every day. Joy is something when we know the love of Jesus in our hearts, that we have all the time, even on the saddest and most difficult days. So as we come to this third Sunday of Advent, we are reminded that we have joy because we are God's children. The scriptures tell us that. Each of us, no matter how old we are or how young we are, we are all children of God. And that's something to be joy-filled about. Will you pray with me, please? Dear God, Help us, all of us, to remember that we have this deep joy that's in our heart, no matter what our days bring. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you next week, boys and girls. I can't wait. God tosses out every notion we have about power, success, wealth, and achievement. More importantly, God comes to us to upset our notion that we have to save ourselves. In Jesus, God comes to us, removing our sin, our failures, our expectations, so we might have new life. Let's confess our sins together. Advent God, we confess we are not the people you hope us to be, the very ones you favor. We too often ignore or ridicule. The ones you knock off their pedestals, we admire and emulate. We are focused on having more and more as we risk being sent away empty. Forgive us, mighty God, and look with grace upon us that we would live securely in your love, that we could fully experience the joy only you can give. Help us to be people of peace for your world who seek to do your will. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. 
Even in this moment, God comes to us bringing hope, bringing forgiveness, bringing grace as freely offered gifts to us. May we open our hearts to the God who is with us and receive the gifts which have been offered to us. Thanks be to God. Amen. At this time, I would invite you to reflect on how you might give to God this week. We offer several opportunities. You can give through the online giving resources of our church uh, by going to our website, or you can send your gifts to 717 Sheldon Road in Grand Haven, Michigan, 49417. However you give these gifts, be sure they are appreciated. Please join me now in blessing our gifts. Holy God, this Advent season, we wait in joy and we give with joy. We give with joy for all you have given us and have abundant joy ourselves because of your sacred promises. Receive these offerings and use them to spread your joy in your world. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verse 46b through verse 55. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please join me in the reading of sacred psalms. Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream that our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. And we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negeb. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy. Carry these sheaves. 
And now I invite you into a reading of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 24. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. May God bless this reading from this epistle. Amen. Please pray with me. Lord God, inspire us now as we reflect on your scriptures. Help us to find in them the way that leads to true life. Help us to magnify you in everything we do and say. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 126 launches us into reflection and I think hope as we sing, May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. I hope in the next few minutes for you to consider with me the possibility that though weeping comes for a time, joy comes in the morning. I mean, let's be honest, Advent is a time of mixed feelings. The darkness begins to give way to the light as we move toward Christmas. J. Walter Cross tells a story of an artist who had finished a work and invited an art critic to come review the work in a, a kind of private viewing. On the appointed day, the critic arrived at the place where the artwork was housed, was then ushered into a dark room. And there he was asked to wait. Time clicked by, almost a half hour before the artisan finally came in and, and apologized for the long wait. The artist explained the reason for this delay. He said, I was afraid that coming in from the bright sunlight, it might be impossible for you to see the subtle inner workings between the colors. Sometimes light can be too bright for us to see the true shades of life. I don't think we have that problem this year, that the light is too bright, that the joy too great to really experience the joy of Christmas. In fact, in this season of what I'm calling COVID Advent 2020, we are in a waiting darkness that allows, I think, an extra glimmer. In fact, I'm praying that the extra veil of this year, the darkness of what we have experienced and our experiences experiencing cause us to see even more the glimmers of light and life on the horizon. To see the subtle inner workings of God's love and of God's grace, to live joy in the midst of darkness that even penetrates the darkness, to embrace in advance the goodness of God. C.S. Lewis once said, God whispers to us in our pleasures, speaks to us in our conscience, but shouts to us in our pain. Haven't you felt a little bit over the last few months that God is shouting to us? Maybe we're unsure what that shout is, but God is inviting us to respond and respect and reflect who God is in the midst of our darkness. God is inviting us, in fact, now to join the chorus, to repeat the sounding joy. God releases the first sounding with the coming of Jesus, with a voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. The Luke passage today is traditionally read on the third Sunday of Advent and is called the Magnificat. Mary sings, My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. This is her response to finding out that she has an unwed pregnancy. But she is delighted to find out that she has been impregnated 
by the Holy Spirit and is expectant of that spirit becoming flesh and dwelling in her. She doesn't wait for the day of birth or bris or bar mitzvah. She starts celebrating in advance, in real time, while it is still dark, when people can still see the contrast between the darkness and the subtleties and colors of light. She celebrates while people are still hungry, while the rich are still in control of the poor, while a young pregnant girl is still subject to embarrassment and prejudice and even rejection in her culture. She chooses, Mary chooses, joy. I think this is one of the challenges for us today. When the skies are still dark, when food lines are too long, and uh, honestly, vaccine lines are still too short. While loved ones are succumbing to physical and emotional illness, will we still choose joy? Mary said, I do. I do choose joy. And we can make that choice too, to never give up on life, to magnify the evidence of God's love in this world. The darkness of this hour is the perfect canvas on which to paint the intricacies of God's love, God's grace, God's unending beauty. We shouldn't give up. I, we can't give up. We must choose to find the little spots of light of God's love within our souls and allow our souls to magnify that love by giving that love out to others. I invite you to magnify as well the pure joy of God's impending birth into the world in Jesus. In Jesus Christ, the dream of a better time, a better way, a better system, a better hope, causes us to burst into laughter because the Lord is here once again to do great things with us. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all things. For all this, we are told, is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. The book of First Thessalonians tells us, do not quench the Spirit. When the Spirit impregnates our lives, we are called to give birth to that Spirit in the world. To give birth to that which is growing in us. To share it. We give birth to Jesus in the world when we magnify God's love, when we replicate it in the world. In the words of Samuel Taylor Coleridge, and I quote, The happiness of life is made of minute fractions, the little soon forgotten charities, a kiss, a smile, a kind look, a heartfelt compliment, the countless infinitesimals of genial friendship. Oh, how we miss some of those right now. We can't. We mustn't wait. We must start today, even before the darkness dissipates, to sound the joy and to repeat that sounding joy. In the poem, Glimpses of Grace, from the collection called A Cry Like a Bell by Madeline L'Engle, we read these words called First Coming. He did not wait till the world was ready, till men and nations were at peace. He came when the heavens were unsteady and prisoners cried out for release. He did not wait for the perfect time. He came when the need was deep and great. He dined with sinners in all their grime, turned water into wine. He did not wait. Till hearts were pure in joy, he came to a tarnished world of sin and doubt, to a world like ours of anguished shame. He came and his light would not go out. He came to a world which did not mesh, to heal its tangles, shield its scorn. 
In the mystery of the word made flesh, the maker of the stars was born. We cannot wait till the world is sane to raise our joys with joyful voice, for to share our grief, to touch our pain. He came with love. Rejoice. Rejoice. Would you join me in prayer? Lord God, pour out your grace and your love on this congregation. Help us to come with expectant hearts through this Advent season to the foot of the manger. Remind us that it was out of love that you came. For God so loved the world, you said. For you so loved the world, you came and blessed us with the presence of Jesus. We pray that we might love the world just as much, that we might stretch ourselves out, that we might give as much as necessary so that all might have their needs met and that all might experience the great joy of the birth of Jesus Christ. Help us to reach out to those who are in the hospital and care homes, those who are imprisoned, those who have lost jobs, those who are struggling for work or for food or for all of those things. Help us to be your people, the incarnation of your love in this world. Help us to have joy in our giving. We pray all these things in the name of Christ who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We join me now in our final hymn, While Shepherds Watch Their Flocks. been immersed in the joy that is Christ Jesus. We pray now that we might spread the joy throughout the world, that all might know your love, your grace, your hope, your peace, and that we might be an expression of that joy. Help us to maintain our sense of humor. Help us to be deliverers of love and grace. Help us to help others make it to Christmas and the joy that brings. In Jesus' name, amen.